Hey everyone, welcome to today's stream. Uh, we're going to be talking about substance in Unity. Uh, so if you guys can hear me, I'm just going to you know, wait just a few more seconds here. But uh, if you guys hear me okay, uh, audio's fine, just let me know in the chat just to make sure we're, uh, we're sounding good and ready to go for this presentation. Like I said, just give me a little thumbs up in the chat window. Uh, we'll be uh, also kind of monitoring the chat, so if you have questions, uh, please feel free to ask those uh, as we're kind of running through the stream. And uh, like I said, you know, I'll be monitoring. We'll, we'll check it out. We'll just kind of keep this kind of open so that, um, you know, we can have a nice dialogue back and forth if you guys have some questions. Uh, all right, good. So um, here we have um, just a couple mentions here. Uh, let me just do one switch. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just uh, switch over this scene here. And we'll just expand this guy out. All right. So uh, in today's stream, uh, what we wanted to do was just take a look at um, the Substance and Unity plugin. So, uh, you know, we've launched, I think it was, uh, you know, about two weeks ago. And uh, we launched the new Substance and Unity plugin for Unity. Uh, that's actually in a beta state. Uh, so, you know, it's not fully featured rich just yet. The team is very hard at work uh, bringing all the features uh, up to par from the previous native integration. And uh, with that, like I said, we're just going to launching here in open beta, uh, just so we wanted to make sure that we get the plugin in, in everyone's hands so they can have time to use it and things like that. It being a plugin, you know, we have some kind of growing pains to go through. Uh, but like I said, the team's working very hard and diligently to uh, get this to a version, you know, like a, an official, you know, production ready release uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so we had our uh, first uh, chat, um, excuse me, we had our first release on the Asset Store, and uh, on uh, May 24th, uh, we released our first update to that. So uh, that's what I kind of want to want to start running through right now. So Substance and Unity uh, 2.0.1 is what we released uh, last week. And so uh, a couple of things I just want to share with you guys about this before we kind of get into looking at Unity. So uh, one question I see coming in uh, already was GPU Engine. Uh, we don't have the GPU Engine just yet in the builds, but uh, the GPU Engine is definitely coming. And uh, that's going to be uh, another benefit to us having an er external plugin here. So uh, just a little backstory: uh, we launched Substance with Unity uh, quite a, many years ago, and the plugin was a native It was a native integration into Unity, so you didn't need to download anything. This was all before the Asset Store and everything like that. So we've had a, a long-standing relationship with Unity, which has been a great partnership. And uh, so Unity uh, started to look at some of the things they're doing with their editor and wanting to make it more lightweight and things like that. So they approached us and wanted us to be, they just let us know that, hey, we're going to remove the, the Substance plugin from, from, the, um, from the native uh, builds of Unity. And then so with that news, we, we jumped right on to you know, creating our own external plugin. And so with that, they gave us a couple opportunities. Number one, we're going to be able to do some things that we were not able to do before, which is uh, specifically add the GPU engine support. So before we weren't, uh, that was a prohibited thing. We weren't allowed to do that when it was a native build. But now that it's external, we can do that. So like I said, long kind of um, answer here to that question, but the GPU engine is coming and we're really happy to say that. One of the things about the CPU engine that we have is that uh, we're using the latest CPU engine, uh, which does allow for 4K processing. Now, right now, it's pretty slow because it's CPU, but uh, we're also working on different optimizations for that uh, so that you can, um, you know, so, it, so it's more practical to be able to use, you know, the 4K output with the CPU. But as you'll notice, once you, if you try to switch a lot of parameters at 4K, it's going to be pretty slow. But like I said, the team's making a lot of progress on, on optimizing that even more. Um, so with our first uh, update here, like I said, this was uh, the first update. Uh, it, it launched on uh, May 24th. So here's a couple of the things. You'll notice that right off the bat, uh, we had this uh, the 2K and 4K substances uh, generate more quickly. So that was uh, some of the... Um, 
some of the benefits. Now, uh, another question here that's coming in is asking, what's the GPU engine? And that's a really good question to ask. Uh, like I said, everybody, if you have questions, let's just, you know, be, please uh, feel free to ask them there in the comments. And like I said, we'll keep it open, have a nice little dialogue here about what's going on. But uh, just to answer your question, the GPU engine, see the Substance engine comes in two different versions. We have a CPU and a GPU. And the CPU engine, well, it operates on the CPU and the GPU operates on the GPU. Now, the algorithm that's going to generate the procedural materials, it's going to change a little bit because of the uh, float precision numbers uh, between CPU and GPU. So sometimes you can get a little bit of a variation in that procedural texture generation. But the GPU engine is, number one, going to let you make or let you produce higher resolution. So like with GPU engine, we're going to be able to do uh, 4K, 8K textures here inside of Unity. Also, it's going to uh, process and create or generate the substance textures faster as well. Uh, another benefit of that, like I said, going back to like um, the support for different processing, uh, algorithm processing and so on, um, you're going to be able to have access to certain things that we didn't before. So for example, I think it was back in Designer 6, uh, we released a, a triplanar node uh, that let you take uh, the projection of a, a 2D procedural noise. So if you projected that on a mesh, you were going to get seams everywhere. But the triplanar allowed you to reproject that in like world space based on you know world space and position input map. And um, so you wouldn't get seams. And the problem with that was it didn't really work in Unity because we needed the GPU engine support to do that because you needed to be able to process uh, in 16-bit. So um, if, if any of you guys kind of remember from the forums, we've got lots of questions about that, and rightfully so. People are like, oh, man, I can't use triplanar. That stinks. Um, so that, that's going to be another thing that I've seen on the forum some people being pretty happy about uh, was that, you know, GPU engine is going to allow us to do, you know, more things faster. What it means on the short term, faster um, computation of the textures and then also larger um, texture sizes. So uh, right off the bat, like I said, one of the big things the team worked on was, uh, again, being able to generate more quickly the substance outputs for 2K and 4K. So number one, I just kind of want to run through these guys so you know what's, what's changed. So number one, general stability of the plugin has been improved. So we fixed a lot of various crashes, hangs, et cetera. Uh, that being a, uh, a bug of course, I mean, excuse me, a beta going through it. Of course, that's going to be every single update we do. Uh, that's going to, you know, be a focus. So some people, you know, may be asking, okay, well, you know, you have this new update. This is 2.0.1. You know, well, where's this feature or that feature and so on? Uh, and please know, everybody, we, we hear your feedback and it's uh, it, it really means a great deal to us uh, the dev team we're all looking at everything that you guys want and we want to give uh, we want to you know get all the features there as, as quick as possible working on that but one of the things that we needed to really do in this release is is you know we, we had the release out we needed to take a step back evaluate you know what was happening with the stability of the plugin and work on that you know, first. So um, with that said, a lot of people uh, are asking about mobile, which is extremely important on the Unity platform. And it's, uh, I can definitely say we were 100% going to support mobile just as we did before. Uh, the dev team is, is hard at work right now on Android and iOS support. Um, so I can't give like an exact uh, ETA just yet, uh, but uh, it w they will be available in a future update. Uh, so please just stay tuned. Of course, um, ask us in the forums and we try to be as transparent as we possibly can. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we wanted to make sure that uh, this release uh, squashed a lot of crashes and things that we were getting. So uh, there was a, a great deal of focus on that, great deal of focus on optimization, as I said. Now, another thing that we're kind of struggling with, uh, or I guess we all are as Unity users with the Substance Update, is, uh, you know, what do we do about our projects? You know, like I had 2017, I want to move to 2018 and all this kind of stuff. What do I do? So uh, we set up this Substance uh, Project updating um workflow so that you could move from a 2017 project with substances to 2018 and that's going to be one of the things that we're going to cover here in this stream as well um but so we've we've actually um we've we've improved that uh, uh quite a bit so it's a lot better than it was before and, and like i said the team is uh, still you know working hard to to make this even better and better and so, like I said, this is going to be, you know, one of the things that we're really going to focus on in this stream is we're going to walk through the process. And I want to show you guys, you know, kind of, you know, some pitfalls you could run into, what you can do to get your projects updated. Um, let's see, a couple other things that, you know, we'll talk about as we go through. Um, 
let's see. I, I'm just looking at some kind of big things. Here was another one that we that the team tackled that was pretty big. Was the parameters now revert back to the default after exiting play? So and when we first launched, let's say you had a substance, you tweak some parameters during play mode, and you exited play mode. Well, whatever you changed was then kind of set to the substance. So that's definitely not kind of the way you would expect Unity to work in play mode. So we we made sure that 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 bug was fixed. So now you don't have to worry about that. Another one that was really big that I think uh, you know really prohibited the use of the plugin was this one here. So you had your material values, like if you set tiling, offset, emission, these types of things on the um, on the material. Uh, you know, okay, well it worked, but as soon as you close the editor and opened it back up, it just reset everything back to default. So you know that was you know a, a pretty huge issue. So we definitely fixed that. Uh, one of the things that some people have been asking about, and uh, here let me just jump over to Unity really quick. Uh, if you look at the material, what I'm talking about here is these types of settings here for like tiling and offset and so on. So what was happening with that first release is if I came in here and I set like, uh, let's see, uh, this is this, the guy I'm working with here, this material. So say I, I you know, I set like, uh, you know, a tiling state like this. Uh, as soon as I close the, the Unity and open it back up, the, all this stuff was being reset back to 1, 1, 0, 0 and so on. So we fixed that issue, which is which is good. Um, another thing that people have been asking about that is a problem, uh, if we come over here to the texture output, you'll notice that on the substance output we have the, the wrap mode, filter mode, and an ESO level. These guys here have not been fixed yet, and uh, we know we got a, we have a lot of people asking about that. So, again, please stay tuned on that. Uh, we're, we're working on getting that fixed. It just didn't make it in this uh, 2.0.1 update, but uh, these guys have not been forgotten, and they will be fixed as well. So... Um, yeah, if we come back over here, a uh, couple things that was, was causing some errors here with adding moving parameters when changing a substance in Designer, so that, that thing's been fixed. Uh, substance textures sizes can now be changed at runtime with this. Uh, the Unity reimport all option no longer unlinks all substances in the scene. Uh, and the preset system has been improved. So these are, you know, the features that we, like I said, that we tried to get in here for this first release, but uh, mainly the big deal here was focusing on these stability issues, uh, substances generating more quickly, and then also making sure these material values are not being reset, uh, you know, whenever you open and close Unity. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, we are going to jump in and start to take a look at updating a project. Now, while I'm here, uh, I also just want to point out to everybody that uh, we've been working pretty hard on the documentation to keep this guy fully, uh, fully fe feature uh, rich here as we update. So you'll see that uh, a lot of this information is here, like our beta release information. We're going to update this with change logs every time we do an update. So like here you'll see uh, the release stuff, uh, any known issues that we have, and so on. Also, if there's anything very specific or important to the update, you'll notice that it's going to be listed right here on this side. So, And this is another thing that I want to run through in this beta, is upgrading a beta substance package from 2 to 2.0.1. Because, you know, still kind of a pain point, uh, as you probably have seen, but I'm going to give you some kind of uh, workflow tips on how to get through that. Um, we also, like I said, have like the full documentation, like if you want to learn how to change parameters, things like that, it's all here. Uh, also, the uh, information for upgrading our projects, which is what we're going to jump into right now. So um, if you are in 2017 and you're on your project, and one of the things we really want to stress that if you're trying to use substances in a commercial or, or, or you're in the middle of production, you know, it's best to stay on 2017 right now. You don't want to upgrade just yet because, like I said, we're in a beta state and uh, it's probably going to cause you more headaches. Uh, so one of the things that we want to do, though, is just make sure for those who are, you know, evaluating or, or you know, using Substance, want to see what's going on or provide feedback to us, uh, here is an option where you can start to upgrade your 2017 projects, and we have just some documentation here on how to go through that. So I want to go through that with you guys now so we can really see how this works. Now, when you're here on this page... Uh, you'll see that I have this link which is going to allow me to download this Substance Updater package that we're going to use on our 2017 projects. And uh, this is what we call the uh, reflection process. And uh, a little bit more on that in just a bit as soon as we jump in here into uh, Substance. But uh, one of the things, excuse me, as soon as we jump into Unity. Um, but you know, one of the things that, uh, that you know, we're going to start to cover here is just the, the idea of how can we best upgrade this project without, you know, losing a lot of stuff? So we're going to use this updater. And 
we're also the team again i always want to stress the team is still working on this this isn't like okay this is done uh you know we're we're still looking at this we're going to make this easier how how we can better improve this process as well as any of the information like i said before where when you want to upgrade from one beta version to the next and we're having some issues so more on that in a bit but the team is also really focused on trying to do that and making sure that you know that this this process is new you know we're moving from an integrated uh native integration to an external plugin there's some excitement there's some good things to that but there's also some some trouble points that we need to address and you know we want to make sure that it's as painless as possible for for you guys our users uh and we really really appreciate you guys feedback and sticking with us you know don't worry we're going to get this thing uh you know unity and substance and unity working really really great it's going to be a much better uh integration than we ever had in unity before all right so with that said let's jump over to unity and take a look at uh what we can do here so um one of the things i'm going to start with i had this scene here i'm actually going to open a different project so let's do this um let me just come over here and grab the unity hub and I think what I want to do is start from uh, a 2017 project. So let's see here. Uh, we're going to open this guy up and I got a little demo folder here, 2017 project. And you can see here I'm, I'm using 2017.3 here. Um, okay, so let's, let's open this project up. Um, so here I am, I'm in 2017. I have the native integration at this point and I want to, I want to jump in and, and check out Substance and Unity for 2018. So let's just kind of run through this process here of how we can uh, successfully upgrade our projects. So I'm just kind of letting everything kind of load up um, here. So this is my, my little scene. And uh, so I'm going to start to upgrade this here. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is, is import in that custom upgrade package. Uh, just to uh, reiterate the point, uh, where I am on this in the documentation is I'm right here on the upgrading 2017 projects and right here at the top you can download this updater. So back here in Unity we're going to right click and we are going to import a custom package here. And I have this in my downloads and this is it here, a substance updater in Unity. So we're going to click open on this guy and here's what we have. So we'll just import this. And so it's uh, compiling our scripts and doing all the fun Unity importing package stuff that we all wait for. Okay, so that, that part's been done. Uh, you'll notice I have a little error down here. Uh, we can just not worry about it for now. However, at the top of the UI, you're going to see that we have this reflection menu. So here's, uh, here's something, here's a tidbit that's kind of interesting. So you may be asking, what is reflection? <laughs> because I asked that too, and uh, you know, you're thinking, what, what does this have to do with like, you know, reflective surfaces? You know, are we talking about, you know? So this is uh, an actual kind of a terminology. What it means is uh, reflection in the sense of, of development wise, what it means is like, we're going to be mirroring settings from one version of something to another. And so that can be referred to as reflection. So uh, if you were wondering why that's called that, that that's that's the reason. Uh, okay, so we hit our drop down, and you'll notice that we have this update all substances. So I'm just going to click this button here, update all substances. Now you're going to get a little warning here. It's going to talk to me about this force text stuff, and it's also going to say, hey, be sure you make a backup. Um, always make a backup. Uh, that's just with anything that you do, of course. Um, so let's do this. Let's take a look at what that force text means. So I'm going to come over here to project settings and I believe it's under editor. And here in the inspector, you'll notice that this asset serialization, uh, there's a mode here and you have force text, force binary and mixed. Um, you just want to make sure that this mode is set to force text so that this updater script can do the work that it needs to do. Um, I, I think that Unity defaults to this, but uh, I ran into issues when I was using this uh, updater on some of my projects because it was set to something else other than force text. Uh, and it didn't work, and it took me a while to figure out what that, what that reason was. So just make sure that this is set to force text for your asset serialization, and you should be good to go. So now we're going to update our substances. Uh, we'll click the Continue button here to do this. Now, this is part of the, uh, part of the kind of... Um, update process that we did in this 2.0.1 build to improve this. So now what happens is in this version, you get a new dialogue that appears and it's saying, hey, do you need to select the destination for the project's main directory? In my case, there's like kind of two ways to look at this. The first way is I'm in 2017. I've never opened this project in 2018. I have no 2018 project. I just 
from scratch here, I'm in 2017. In that case, what I want to do is just select the project folder. So in my case here, you can see I'm in 2017. This is where I want to place this in the folder. So select folder for this root level of my 2017 project, and we're good to go. All right, so another scenario would be, okay, you know what? I have this 2017 project, and then I had a backup of it, so I still had the 2017 project, and I already opened this in 2018. Okay, so once it's opened in 2018, um, you're you're kind of um, you're kind of in a, a sticky situation there, uh, because you know we can't run this updater project from the 2018 uh, builds. So you need that 2017 project. And in the case that you have done that, but you still have your 2017 project, what you could do is you could say, all right, I have a 2017 version of this project. I'm going to uh, select the 2017. Uh, I'm sorry, the 2018 projects root folder and select that to place these transfer files going to get created. So this is just in case you have a 2018 and we're, but you still have to do the update from the 2017. So in my case, I don't have that. We're just going to put it in the 2017 folder. So I hit select and then I just wait just a few moments here and then a dialog will appear saying success. All substances have been updated well successfully. So we're going to click OK to that. That's that's good news. So now, if I come over here into my project, I have a materials folder and I have a substance folder. Here's these substances. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to refresh this. And when I do that, you can see that we start to get these uh, files that have been placed in here. And this is part of the updater uh, project. So these are called uh, transfer files. And they are basically doing this reflection process where they are mirroring all of this um, information that it needs to, that the new Substance plugin is going to need to use uh, to, to reestablish all of our links and everything. So um, that's what these transfer files are. And like I said, if you choose that set project directory to, to a 2018 version of this project, these transfer files, are, that's basically what you're doing is you're placing those transfer files in that, direct, in that 2018 project. Okay, so now that I have that, let's go back to our asset here. And uh, this is like in the project uh, explorer window here. And you'll have this plugins folder. Now, within this plugins folder, I have substance. And in my case, substance is the only plugin I have in Unity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete out of here the plugins folder. Now, be careful because if you have other packages that use a plugins folder, you know, you wouldn't want to delete the whole plugins folder. You'd want to just delete substance. But in my case, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to delete this guy. So delete uh, the plugins. Okay, so uh, that's basically all I need to do. And so now I can uh, close uh, 2017. And uh, let's jump back over here to Unity 2018. So I'm just grabbing the Unity Hub here. And uh, let's see. We are going to open up this project. So open. This is it here. So select the folder. Let's make sure that the Unity version. Now I'm using 2018.1. Um, this is the, um, I guess, the official release that Unity has currently. So we're going to use this guy and we'll click open. And now we're going to let Unity do its thing. It's going to take just a moment here. Uh, yes, uh, we're just going to click continue to this. And yeah, sure. Wonderful news about the Unity package manager. So we'll click OK on that. All right, so uh, let's see a couple questions in here. Uh, so one of the things that someone's asking is they really hope Sessence will be able to utilize the new visual shader system in the future. Uh, that's, a, that's, a great, um, that's a great request, and you will be able to do that. Um, you could technically actually do it now. So if you created uh, you know, a new shader system using the visual, like the node-based editor, uh, I forget, the shader graph, uh, you can actually take substance outputs and just plug those right in and use those. So that works now uh, as it is. Uh, in the future, we'll, we'll further automate that process. Uh, just same thing we're going to do with uh, working with the new um, renderable, scriptable, renderable, excuse me, scriptable rendering pipeline. So we have the um, HDRP and the lightweight uh, RP, uh, rendering pipeline as well. We're going to suppo support both of those out of the box too. So again, that's something that's coming in a future update. Uh, you know, automated workflows for Shader Graph as well as HDRP and, and uh, LWRP. But like I said, for now, if you have the Shader Graph, you could just create like your own shader and then take the substance outputs and drag those in. And those substance generated outputs will work in the Shader Graph. Like I've been doing that and it, it works. So you could technically use it now. Uh, okay, so here we have our, our project uh, finally opened up here. And uh, so now you can see, well, 
you know, I have something, I have my materials, my substances, they're in here, the tra everything's in here, but, uh, you know, it doesn't look right. We need to, we need to get this thing working here with the new plugin. And that's when we're going to jump over here to the asset store. So we're going to come over to our asset store here. And we'll let this guy load up here for just a second. We're connecting to the asset store. And um, here, if you've never used Substance and Unity, you could start to do a search for it, and you'll see that it shows up here, Substance and Unity. Uh, I've actually already downloaded it, so I'm just going to go to my downloads. And I'll scroll down, and here it is, Substance and Unity. Now, if, you were, uh, if you've used this before, Substance and Unity, uh, you may see this as uh, you know the 2.0.0 build, in which case you should see an update here. Now, I've already updated, so what I can do is just simply import here. So I'm going to do an import, and um, you'll notice as well, if you've used Substance, this is another question that we got quite a few times on the forum, so I just want to ask about, uh, just kind of illustrate this a little bit more. Um, Substance and Unity was actually on the Asset Store even before 2018 was out. So Substance and Unity, what we had before was it contained a Live Link plugin, so that's a, a Live Link between Substance Painter and Unity, and it also contained uh, Substance Source. So Substance and Unity was only those two things before. And what we've done is now that we've released the 2018 uh, Substance Engine part of this, that's what you see here uh, when we look at the package, Substance Engine, uh, it's all part of the same Substance and Unity. So one thing uh, some users were getting was they were downloading, but they didn't update that package because maybe they had used it you know, back in 2017. Um, you know, so just make sure that the sub you see the Substance Engine here because if you don't see it, it just means you need to update. Uh, so now we're going to import, and this is going to import everything. And here I'm just kind of looking through here. Now, one question came in. Someone was asking, can I make a material in Unity and, and convert that to a substance pointer material in Unity by this package? Uh, no, you, you cannot do that. Uh, what this package does is it, uh, like I said, it comes with kind of three features. And one is the Substance Engine. And what that does is it allows you, and you can see it here in the plugins. So we'll have Substance Engine. What that's going to do is it allow you to import substance materials, which are, uh, they have the extension SBSAR file. Those are going to be, uh, you know, files that are exported from or published, we'll say, from Substance Designer. So it basically lets you take uh, materials that you create in Designer and import those here and work with them inside Unity. So, but you, but it doesn't allow you to take like a material in Unity and then package that as a substance. Uh, okay, so we've imported in our our plugin package here. So now that's set. What I need to do now is just come over here to my materials. And uh, then what I need to do is just re-import my substances. Now, this here is, like I said, another kind of pain point that we're kind of going through right now. Uh, because if you had like a, a Unity project with like tons and tons of materials, this, this would obviously be, uh, you know, a, a manual work here. And so, again, this is something that we're always evaluating and looking at. But so for right now, this is kind of the step of where we are with this is that um, we have our transfer files and everything. So let's import one of these materials. So I'm just going to right click on this parquet wood and I'm going to choose re-import. Okay, so I do that and you can see well this turns pink here in the viewport. So now if I just right click here and I just do a refresh uh, and then it's going to ask me if I want to reload. It now reloads. You'll see the transfer file goes away and the substance is here. And so if I go back over here into the substance and I uh, you know expose this here and I look at the graph, I now have the substance uh, I can come in and if we just make like a quick change here to the floor, so we'll do, you know, just so you guys can see it, you know, I'm, I'm playing around with the substance parameters right now. So the substance is now, uh, you know, correctly reapplied back to the scene. So again, what I might want to do is come over here to this plaster. Uh, oops, I got to apply this. And here in just a moment too, I'm also going to go over just general usage of the plugin uh, for those who, if you're totally new to this and you just want to see what substance is doing. Um, so here, let's do this guy. Let's uh, do a re-import here. So we're going to do re-import. Uh, and then again, I could just do a refresh or I could, you know, re-import everything and then do a refresh at the last moment, you know, the last thing. But now I've re-imported this plaster back in. Uh, let's here, let's do this wood. So we'll do a re-import. Uh, let's do the steel. Uh, we're going to re-import this guy here. And I have this marble. We'll re-import this. 
and my leather. Reimport this guy. And I have this glass. I don't really like this anyway, so I'm, I think I'm just going to delete that and redo that. And we'll, we'll use that as an illustration point here in a second. So let's just refresh. We're going to reload these. And so here we have our scene back. Uh, everything is set the way it, it was in the 2017 version as well. So you should have your project all set and ready to go. So like I said, you do have to go through and just kind of manually re-import some of these guys. Oh, let's do the carpet too. Forgot the carpet. Uh, re-import... And finally, here we'll do the refresh and get our carpet back. There we go. All right, so now here, like I said, we have our carpet substance in here. Uh, okay, so like I said, uh, we're going to get our scene back. Uh, it's going to be working like, uh, like, we, like we had it in our 2017 project, but now we're just uh, updated here. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to mess with this glass, so I'm going to just delete this guy out here, and uh, we're going to redo this. So see, I had some glass here, and that's pink. I'm going to, uh, you know, rework this glass. So with that said, uh, oh, I still have this little error here, and this is telling me the built-in support. Uh, here, let's do this. If you look at this here, you can see that we have this error. Now, this is being generated from Unity if you're using 2018. It's just letting you know that built-in support for designer materials has been removed from Unity to continue, you just have to use the plugin, which we've done. So we've done that. We can just clear this out now and not worry about it. So everything's good. Uh, we've upgraded our 2017 project to 2018. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is look at, uh, you know, how can we use the plugin? So for example, uh, if I come over here to Substance now, we have new Substance menu. Uh, we have, uh, well, Substance Source Access. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just open this guy up. And I'm going to log in. Okay, so I'm um, just logged in here, and uh, let's take a look at, uh, let me just do a search here for glass. Might try to find some kind of new glass we could use. I was using this one, I didn't like it. Um, so what this is that you're looking at, in case you're new to this, this is Substance Source, and Substance Source is part of our Substance um, suite of tools, and uh, it is a uh, just a full physically based material library uh, that we update each and every month and Substance Source, uh, if you're on Substance subscription with Designer and Painter, you get Source with that as well. And so we also have Substance Source plugins uh, for uh, applications uh, such as Unity here. So you can access your Substance Source library directly here inside of Unity. Uh, of course, you don't have to do this. Like if you wanted to use Designer and create your own materials, you could do that. Uh, if you wanted to go out to Substance uh, Share, so uh, let me just bring that up as well. So we'll come over here and let's do a search for Substance Share. Uh, in case you're new to this, uh, Substance Share is uh, another site that we run that uh, is, that's basically just like a, a huge repository of materials that's all created by the community. So there's going to be a lot of really great high quality materials on here that a lot of our substance artists is from the community upload for free. So if you're looking substances for your projects, uh, check out Substance Share and see. Like I said, it's a free exchange platform and you can get free substances here. Uh, like I also said, we have Substance uh, Source, which is our, uh, you know, our full library like we talked about before. So if we go to Substance Source, this here is the exact browser that we were just looking at inside of Unity. So it's just another way to come in and get uh, Substance materials here. Uh, all right, so let's jump back over here to... Um, substance here uh yeah i saw it i saw the uh shout out there the user of bing <laughs> i'm sorry yeah i had bing running there so yeah i'm the one guy right <laughs> that's pretty funny um okay so substance source uh yeah we were looking for glass and uh i don't know let's just grab this one here and uh, download. So I hit download, and what it does here is it just downloads that substance for me right here into my project. So one of the things that we've done here is uh, again we've uh, there were some crashes that we were getting with Substance Source in the 2.0.0 release, uh, which uh, which should be please report if it if you experience anything, but it should be fixed now in the the, the latest update. So now, if we come over here to my materials, uh, this is where uh, the substance is, is, is located here. So if I want to use this guy, uh, I can simply, uh, what it does, this is just kind of a little introduction into the substance plugin if you're, if you're new here. Uh, we have uh, this new object here. So 
like I said, a lot has changed when we move this to our own kind of external plugin here. So we're, we now are creating a, a new substance object itself. And uh, this is quite different from what we had before. Uh, some things have to change, some things have to be different because when we had the native integration before with Unity, we had specific access to source uh, libraries, uh, source code libraries that we do not have access to as a plugin. So that means we have to do some things a little differently in this plugin to, to get the same functionality. Uh, does it mean one's better or worse? It just means it's different. That's all it is. Uh, and like I said, we're again, always listening to your guys' feedback so that, you know, we could continue to improve this. So what we have now is a substance object. It's a scriptable object. So we have a new substance material API. Before, in 2017, you had the procedural material API, and now we have the uh, substance uh, material API. So that is going to be different. Now, one thing you might be asking is, well, hey, my 2017 project had some substance scripts to it. What about that? Well, at this time, we don't, unfortunately, have a way to upgrade those scripts because it's a completely new object. Um, a lot of things have changed there. So... In that case, there's going to have to be, you know, some manual work there that goes into that uh, to upgrade that process. And, and, and unfortunately, that's just going to have to be a byproduct of what happens to us with this kind of move to this external plugin. Um, so, like I said, it, it is a new object altogether. Um, and once you have their object, if we just expand this, you can see that, well, the first thing we do is we create a material, and that's similar to what we did in the original plugin, or the, the native plugin, I'll say, from 2017 and earlier. And here, you'll notice that, well, I have a Unity material, and it's set to the standard shader. That's what we're using by default. And you'll have things like your albedo, metallic, normal, and so on. Um, so when you look at this, uh, we have some buttons here at the top now called go to substance graph, go to substance. So this is all kind of new. One of the things that we did completely differently is that we uh, kind of extrapolated or we did, we extrapolated the substance graph from the material. So in previous, the native integration will say, uh, you had a material, a Unity material, and you had your material. And as you scrolled down, you would see all of the substance parameters and changing the texture. Every, all the substance um, control was all, you know, uh, kind of wired or right into that Unity material. So the, they, were, they were one entity, this material. And that worked fine, uh, but it also caused some problems, I felt like, in workflow when, let's say that, okay, well, I don't want to use this material that we generated from, from this. I want to create my own material and I want to be able to just use the substance. Uh, earlier, a question was asked about, um, well, can I use shader graph? Well, yeah, you can, but what was happening is say you created a new material, you know, you come over here and you create like a material like this and then you, you pick like a different shader. Maybe it's a custom shader that you wrote yourself or you got off the asset store or like I said, it's something you're creating in shader graph. You create the material, set the shader, uh, you could take these substance outputs. These are the generated textures, and I know this glass is a terrible example. Well, I'll, I'll show you something a little better in a second because these are just like uniform values, basically. But, um, you know, you could then just drag and drop these guys like this right into the texture, you know? And so, as you can see, you can still do that, but what was happening was now if I wanted to change my substance parameters, I'd have to always go back to a material that I'm not going to use anymore, scroll down, and work with our substance parameters. So the kind of workflow for creating custom content like this, materials or shaders, wasn't, wasn't really great. So now what we have is uh, this, you know, the, the material is separated from the graph. And this works like all of our other integrations as well. When you look at something like 3ds Max or Maya or Moto or Unreal Engine or, you know, Lumberyard or CryEngine, all these other integrations all work the same way. So Unity was kind of on its own when it came to taking a material that we generate and, you know, basically compositing all the parameters within that material like that. So we broke this off uh, so that we could, you know, have room to grow in the future and, of course, uh, keep everything kind of, you know, more of what you would expect if you're already in the this, this substance ecosystem. So with that said, how do you change the substance properties? Well, uh, if I'm on the material and I'm making tweaks to the material, I can click this Go to Substance Graph button, and that'll take me right here to the graph object. Now, you can see it's selected here. And what we call, we call this the SGO. It's kind of the cool like acronym name for it. But what it means is Substance Graph Object. So SGO. Um, and so on the SGO, you can see that it's just the parameters. 
So if I did have another material where I'm just, you know, feeding in my maps like this because I want the substance just to generate, just create for me textures that I want to use in a custom material or, or shader, all I have to do now is go to the substance object, go to its graph and tweak the settings. I don't have to like go to an old material, like I said, and scroll down and find stuff. So that's what the SGO is. And on the SGO, we can quickly go to the material to get back to make changes on the material if we want to change tiling or whatever, uh, adjust some of our parallax or whatever we need to do. And then if we need to make changes, hit the button, go right back to, to the graph. Now, there's also some, some things about this uh, that, you know, we have ideas for how we can improve this in the future, like I said, for more custom workflows. And I think you'll start to see more of this come into play when we start to really uh, officially support, like, the, the, uh, the HDRP, the high def rendering pipeline and, and things like that. Because those are going to take some, you know, those are going to be like custom workflows. And so we're going to be able to start to, uh, the, way, the way I'm kind of envisioning it is we're going to be able to start to... Um, you know, allow the user to work with these custom workflows more, you know, which is, which is exciting, I think, for the future. Uh, so one, one other question here I just want to want to get into. Uh, so we have a question here about, uh, can you paint into a texture in Unity and have that drive a substance material? Like a game, if you had a paint gun that painted into a mask used for placement. Um, so, yeah, you could do something like that. So um, just to divert the here, uh, let's say that I have my substance graph. And uh, a substance is going to have all these parameters. And one of the things that's really cool about a substance is that you can have a special type of parameter called an input parameter. Uh, and what that means is that you, when you're in Substance Designer, you just create an input node. And that input node could be like, I don't know, it could be like a mask or something. And so say, say you're in Unity, you're using like one of the vertex color paint tools or something like that, or a painting tool to create a, a texture in Unity that you got off the asset store or something. You could like say, you know, paint that texture, use that texture as an input to the substance. And then the substance can use that input to drive whatever you want in the substance because you, you would author that in Designer. So maybe that, that mass that you're creating, um, you know, creates water puddles in the substance or whatever and it's all driven by that mass so um, to answer that question yes you can do that using substance inputs and we actually uh, if, if you want more information for that here uh, using image inputs you'll see that here um, so there's a whole section here in the documentation about how that works and how you can use them so you'll notice here that you know we have it set up uh, just on the texture uh, you just need to set it to read write enabled uh, so it'll work and then here is a section where I had an example where I took a substance and I gave it a, a, a custom height map as an input. And so now I can just take whatever texture I want for my project and drag it in there. And then that texture can then be used, depending on how I authored it in Designer, to create all kinds of different types of effects based on that input map. So that's how that would work. So like I was saying, we were talking about the, the SGO graph and our parameters and everything. And again, input image, image inputs is another part of that. On the SGO, we also have the ability to manage presets. So let's say that, you know, I want to export a preset or import a preset. So um, the way here, we'll, we'll worry about that. We'll do that in a minute. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Uh, but for now, you also have your other procedural properties. And these are the same as what we had in the native integration. So you have your generate all outputs. By default, we generate only the outputs that are really needed by the material itself. But maybe in your substance, you create some... Uh, Maybe in your, your substance, you would create some, some outputs that you want to use in some type of custom shader or workflow. Um, I do that a lot. Like maybe I'll create a substance that generates masks or something that's not going to plug into the standard shader in any way. So what you could do, again, we'll go back to our substance graph. You could say generate all outputs here, and I'll hit apply. And now here you'll see it generates all these outputs. So if we look here, let me just expand this view. Uh, now, these are the other textures. So in this particular case of this substance, here, we'll really expand this guy. This is, again, a substance I got from source. And whenever you look at a substance from substance source, it supports both the metallic roughness and the specular glossiness PBR workflows. And so with that, you'll notice that, well, I have diffuse, gloss, inverted IOR, opacity, just a, a refraction maps, all kinds of stuff. Now, this refraction map's not going to do me any good in the standard Unity material, but maybe you have a custom shader where it would work, you know, where you could use this output, you know, so it's there. Um, and so that's where we change that. Now, now that we're here in this generated texture section, that brings me to another change that we made here uh, that I think is pretty good. So we have always had the ability to uh, work with Unity's kind of, um, 
you know, how Unity works with packed maps. So for example, if we go back to the material and you have a metallic mask, I'll tell you what, instead of using this glass, which is a terrible example, let's go, um, let's go to this carpet. Let's, let's see, let's come over here and let's look at the carpet. So sorry guys, I had us looking at this like blank material the whole time. <laughs> it's pretty boring. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, yeah, I was going back here to the material. Now, here Unity has a metallic input and then it takes, as you can see, if I mouse over this, um, the tooltip comes up and says, well, we have metallic, R, red channel, and smoothness in the A. So we had the ability to basically take the smoothness map uh, and pack that into um, the metallic maps alpha. So we've always had the, a way to work with that. Here, let's go to our substance graph. We've always had a way to work with that here with these with these dropdowns. But in the original integration, it was pretty confusing because when you click the dropdown, there was all this stuff in here that didn't, I don't know, some of it didn't, it didn't really make sense. Like you would look at it and be like, what, is this talking about the, because it would show like the substance outputs, but it would also show the inputs to the Unity material and so on. And it was a little confusing. So now what we do is we just show the substance outputs here, okay? And you'll notice that if we come over here to this metallic, well, the metallic in this case, since it's just carpets black, but if we look at this, we are saying that we want to generate the smoothness and we want to place that into the A here stands for alpha. We want to place that into the alpha of that. So this is a way to pack this. Now, let's say that I was doing something custom. You could pack this a different way. Uh, like I said, this was in the native integration and we still have this packing capability here, but uh, it's just been streamlined to actually make sense with, with the names of the substance output. So this is good. Um, here you can see another example where if we look at, uh, well here, let's do this. Let's go to our metallic texture and you can see, well, it's black. There's no metal value. But if we click the this RGB alpha button, here is that smoothness map that's generated and it's placed here in the alpha of that metallic map. Same thing if we come over here to our base color. So base color, if we look at the alpha, okay, here it's, you know, pure white. Uh, that's because if we go back here to our substance graph and I'll scroll down, opacity here is uh, being placed in the alpha of the RGB. Well, in this carpet, there's, there isn't any opacity to this. Uh, so that's why we're seeing the value here like this. Um, another way to kind of visualize this would be if we actually did go and look at our glass. Let's see, let me pull this up. Uh, let's go to our SGO. Um, and there's a section here on this called glass opacity. So I'm going to set this to like a low value. So here's that that opacity map. You can see where it's kind of going to, let's, here, let's put it towards black. So now it's black. Now if we look at, uh, if we come over here and we look at, here, let's do it like this. One column so we can really see this. Let's go to our base color here. Uh, I'm just going to apply that setting. And now if I look at the alpha channel, again, it, it's that black value there. Uh, one more time, if we go back here to that graph, let's change that uh, that opacity to something like 0.4. Now I can scroll down and hit apply here just to apply that setting. And if we go back to that base color and look at our alpha, uh, now that's gonna be updated. Oh, I switched the wrong thing, sorry about that. Let's go back here to that grass. Sorry, I changed the wrong thing. I'm supposed to change the, uh, not. I, don't, I forget which one I changed there, but I needed to change glass opacity. So we'll set that to around 0.5 and let's click apply. And then if we go back and look at that base color and the alpha, now you can see it has this type of uh, transparent value. So again, we'll go back here to that substance graph object, and that's what we're doing here with these pack channels. And again, on this glass, when I open this up, and we are outputting all of these values, or all the outputs, because we have this set to generate all output maps, I can view everything. Another thing that we added, which is pretty good, is the ability to work with uh, if a texture is to be flagged as sRGB or not. So if you look at a Unity texture, uh, you can, let's see, I have one in here, I think, uh, just a regular texture map. Let's see where I have this stuff. Where is it? Let's go back in here and we'll grab this guy. Ah, no, I already switched it. Never mind. But, um, here, let me just, let me just import something really quick from the desktop. All right, so here's a texture, and you'll notice that we have this sRGB color texture tab, and we could set this, okay, this is a color image, so it should be sRGB, but we can uncheck this and make it linear if we wanted to. Or I'll say it doesn't actually get changed to being linear. We're just telling the Unity shader to interpret it as uh, not sRGB, but as linear data. Um, 
we now added that ability here. Uh, here, I don't that okay we added that ability here uh on these substance texture outputs so this is a new change as well so if you wanted to change this you could so for example height uh this should be read as linear so you can notice that the srgb is unchecked uh so you now have that control which in the native uh plugin we didn't have that control uh once you had a substance output you couldn't change if it was to be flagged as srgb or not so we added that control here with the generated textures which is which is good i'm glad that we added that all right, and then finally here at the bottom, when we look at our SGO, this is where we have our target settings. And this is kind of in the same location as it was in the native plugin, except it's not on the material. Uh, but here's where we can change like our texture here. And again, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to our carpet. So we can see this, scroll down. Here you can see where I can change textures. Now you'll notice that this goes up to 4K now. Uh, that's because the new CPU engine that we work with that we just released uh, not too long ago in Designer uh, supports 4K now, but of course it's going to be kind of slow. So let's say I want this to be 1024 by 1024. I'll just change it. Uh, it's regenerating the texture now. So now we have a 1024 by 1024 uh, texture. Um, this right here is a little bare bones uh, as of right now, and this is another um, area where we're working to improve. So you'll notice that right now target settings is just default, meaning that, okay, we're only supporting PC outputs right now, PC builds for like Mac Windows. But uh, like I said, mobile, we're gonna be supporting more and more platforms and mobile is, is, is being worked on right, right now. So um, you'll see more target settings for more platforms that Unity supports uh, as we progress through the beta. Um, here you have your high quality compression settings and so on, but you'll notice that the load behavior is, is grayed out right now. So this is another uh, area that's missing in the beta uh, that the team's working on to also add. So in previous versions of Unity, or sorry, I'll just, the native integration of Unity, we had various load behaviors like uh, bake and discard, uh, build, they were basically, what, what do you do with the substance? Do you build it on level load? Do you bake and discard it? Uh, do, you, um, do you load asynchronously? Do you load synchronously? And so on. So it was basically allowing you to change what the load behavior was. Sometimes it was do nothing, uh, which is, looks like it's defaulting to here, but it's not. Do nothing meaning that, hey, don't generate any substance textures. I'm going to do it for myself in script. You know, so um, that was one thing. So this is grayed out. We can't really work with this right now. So what it's doing by default, and this is actually um, mentioned in our documentation, is it's it's set to uh, build on level load asynchronously. So that's what it's defaulting to. It's the only mode we have right now. But again, this is the team's working on this, and you know, we'll have the load behaviors back just as they were before. Um, so speaking of compression, I want to talk about something else here with this uh, normal texture. So when you look at this normal texture, um, you're like, well, well, this looks a little weird. Why, why is it yellow green? Why is it not the, the blue color that we would associate a normal map with? So this is a change that we had to make when we move from native to external plugin. Now, when we had the native integration in Unity, uh, we, like I said early on, we had access to a, a source level of code that did, you do not get access to as a plugin. Um, with that, there is a compression that Unity uses that you probably know very well. It's uh, uh, DXT compression underscore NM. So, like, basically, if you have, like, a texture, like, if you do this, let's see if I can do this. Uh, whoa. Uh, I'm sorry, I hit the re-import. Didn't want to do that. Let's do it. Import a new asset. Let me see if I have a normal texture real quick. I know I have something here. Let me see. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, here's an idea. I know where something is. I'm sorry, let me just grab just a file real quick. Painter exports. So we have a normal map in here somewhere. There we go. All right, so this is a normal texture, right? So I'm gonna import this guy in. This is what it comes into, this is what it looks like. So let's say that, um, I don't know, let's create like a new material here. And I'm going to take this normal map and I'm going to place it in the normal map input. Well, you get this message that shows up says, hey, this texture is not marked as a normal map. What do you want to do about it? And I'm like, yeah, fix it for me, please. So Unity is going to fix this uh, for me. Now, if I look at this normal texture, if we look at the compression to it, you have this um, uh, DXT uh, NM, meaning normal DXT compression. So we no longer, this is what we used in the, in, uh, in the native version of Unity uh, that was natively, I'm sorry, <laughs> the native substance integration in Unity. This is what we had access to because we had, like I said, source access. 
but uh, we you cannot set this compression now without that level that we had in the native integration. So we can't just say, oh, for our substance outputs, we, we need that to be DXT and M. We can't do that anymore. So we had to go with another option, and that's where we're getting this um, compressed BC5. Now, the reason we chose uh, BC5 is because we could have chosen to go with DXT, um, and that would have, you know, looked like this, this kind of blue. The blue channel would be there. So what's happening here with the BC5 compression is you'll notice it's just RG. You're missing that blue channel because of the way it's compressed. The BC5 is a bet is a lossless compression. It's giving you better quality than what we could have gotten if we just did DXT compression. So we would have had the RGB channels with DXT, but the normals would have looked not so good. It would have looked worse than what you had with this DXT and M, which is, like I said, we don't have access to. So what we wanted to avoid was people, you know, using substances that they've always used in Unity, and then all of a sudden in 2018, all their substances, like, oh man, this looks terrible. What's going on here? And we wanted to avoid that. So we wanted to go with the best option we could, which was to be a better normal uh map here so you have this compressed bc5 which uh gives you you know better quality at lossless better quality than we could have gotten with just dxt uh so we went with the best solution we could quality we chose quality now with that said um i, I internally we've, we've talked about hey we you know we should give the users an option to this maybe that maybe they need dxt because one of the things that i saw uh show up on our forums a few times was people asking well you know if i'm using unity's terrain shader so for example if i uh, if i go back to let's say oh shoot where did i put that material i don't know let's say it's this guy and um Let's see. Let's say I had the the. Ter uh, whoops, sorry about this. Let's do. Oh, whoops. I'm sorry. I'm choosing the wrong one here. Um, just to try to illustrate this point. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not really. I haven't. I don't actually use the terrain shader very often, so I'm sure I'm doing this incorrect. But uh, you basically could have a normal on here. So <laughs> for those that are watching, going, "What is this? What is this guy doing? He's a goof." Sorry about this. Um, like I said, I don't really use. It. I'm sure I'm doing something really stupid. Um, but yeah, you would have your normal map input on your terrain shader, and if you tried to grab the substance and just drag and drop that into the input, it, it wouldn't let you. You would get that same message saying, "Hey, this isn't a normal." I'm not seeing this as a normal map. What, what do you want to do? And you, you can't change anything. So like I said, um, in those types of situations, this BC5 compress was causing some, some workflow issues with customers. And whenever we hear those type of issues, we always are listening and we always take those things seriously. So again, you know, we're talking about, you know, what, what can we do in the future as well? Do we want to add an option to say, hey, let, I don't want BC5, I want DXT or, or something. You know, can we give you guys the choice to make that yourself? Um, so... I just wanted to kind of clarify what's happening here with this BC5 compression and why we have why we're using that. I don't mean to say have to, but why we chose to go that route. Uh, another question that just popped up here: iOS support yet? Um, we we talked about this a little bit before, but uh, right now we do not have that. Uh, it is being worked on iOS and Android support, uh, so please stay tuned. I, I don't have an ETA, but we're working on it. Um, okay, so that's going to take care of what I was talking about here with our substance graph and uh, kind of all the settings and how this works. So remember, this is the SGO here. And uh, let's say like one of the things, let's, let's just come over into here on uh, our scene. And, and let's say that uh, maybe I wanted to make a, a, a color here, a change to the carpet. So maybe we wanted like this kind of carpet. I don't know, maybe, yeah. Maybe we wanted something like, you know, just really in your face <laughs> with the carpet here. Um, so, um, yeah, why don't we do like, yeah, because who wouldn't want this lime green carpet like this? All right, so um, say we say we want to go with something like this. And, um, you know, we want to make some presets to that. So you can uh, export this as a preset. So this here is uh, synthetic quilted. Uh, you see this SBS PRS. This is the substance preset. Now, this preset works across all of our software that accepts presets. So, for example, if you we're working inside of Unity here and you wanted to use these presets in say 3ds Max, you could do that. You could save this out, 
So here we'll go to our desktop and we'll, we'll save this out. Now that preset file can be opened in Max or any of our other integrations that support presets and you could, you know, load it up, use the preset, and it would look just like whatever you set here in Unity. Same thing with Designer. Another thing that's interesting is that uh, within Designer, uh, one of the latest versions of Designer, we also um, work with uh, embedding presets. So now we gave you the tools to embed presets within Substance Materials as well. And that's really handy if you're working with custom substances that you're creating or substances that we have on source that have presets with them. So here, uh, I can reset this back to default and say I want to call up this again. So we'll, we'll import our preset, and you can see how it works there. So we, like I said, we're working on further managing this preset system here. Um, so again, that you can use all these presets. Um, so we've talked about the material, and we've talked about the SGO. Uh, let's talk about whoops the substance itself. So we also have a button here called Go to Substance, uh, and I need to apply. Whenever you move away from the substance, you do have to apply uh, your settings. Uh, because we're moving away from the object. Uh, okay, so now this is kind of like the root level of the substance. So if we look, uh, we're talking about this here. This is the, the substance scriptable object that we have. Uh, so here, uh, if we look at this guy, whoops, go back here. This is our graph object. Now, like I said in here, we have the SGO and then you have the substance itself. This is like, uh, you can see it's the actual SBSAR file. Now, uh, here is where you can manage your substance graphs. And again, if we take a look over here, if we uh, if you jump over to the documentation, there's a section in here on managing substance graphs. So all this stuff is here in our documentation if you want to you know, revisit this later. Uh, but we have substance graphs. And what this allows you to do is make uh, duplicates and copies of this. Now, we had this same functionality in the uh, native integration. However, like I said, it was all tied to the material itself. So if you went to the material, at the very top, you would see that uh, where you could duplicate and, and copy substances as well as all your parameters. So we've moved that outside of that material as well into its own object. So now let's say that I have this, this substance and I want to make a copy of it. Well, I can just click this uh, plus button here. And now I have a new version of this. Uh, so I'm going to apply this here. And uh, you'll see what it's going to do is it's going to generate for me uh, here uh, a copy of this substance uh, with its own set of uh, substance outputs. So it's uh, basically regenerating everything that I had set up before. Let's see here. Let me make sure this is working like it should. You know, it's looking like it's kind of lagging for me here. It could be an issue, but I, I don't know. It seems we haven't had issues with this before, so maybe it's just because I'm live and <laughs> things have to happen this way. But uh, what we should be getting here, let me double check. Let's see, go to the material. Yeah, it's kind of frozen up here on me a little bit. Wait for it just a second here. But yeah, what this is going to do, like I said, when it's when it works, <laughs> is it uh, you create a copy here of the material, and when you click apply, it generates a new copy of the substance. So you get like a set of textures, and uh, here we'll get this to work. I know this guy works. Not sure why I'm having a problem with it now. It's because the carpet is so green. Yeah, probably so. It's it's tough. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is probably just a little bit of a beta hiccup here. There we go. Let me try this. Now that apply was coming up, so there we go. It worked. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, again, when you guys are trying this, let us know if you have an issue with that. Uh, you know, we've we've been testing it, haven't had that issue before, so it's probably just my luck and it's live. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you can see what it does is that now we have two materials. So two separate materials, and uh, here, it's better if we look at this through the one column. Uh, so now you'll have like, uh, like another um, graph uh, SGO. So we have two materials, uh, then we have like uh, two different versions of this, um, of this graph here. So that means we have a whole new set of parameters. So in this case, I, I'm going to switch. This one is my uh, red. We'll switch it here. And I'll hit apply to this. So we're just going to apply those, those substance settings. 
Uh, and then if we go back and look at the original here, you can see that it's still set to green. So it just gives us a way to go in on the SBS AR level and manage these graphs. We can create new duplicates of the materials. It's going to generate new textures here for us as well. Uh, and then we can use these um, to basically uh, duplicate that. So like I said, it's the same kind of functionality we had in the in the native integration, uh, but it's it's just now as part of its own, it's part of the SBSAR. So for example, here's that base color. You can see we have a green version of the base color and now we have that red version here. Because we're generating new materials, um, you, you could, um, you know, have, you know, two different copies of that and that's the way to manage it. Um, so yeah, please, you know, guys, let us know if you guys are having any issues with that kind of stuff as well. Like typically that didn't have such a pause like it did. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, if you guys do have issues, just let us know in our support threads and stuff and so on. Um, okay, so that is going to take care of our SBSAR and uh, how we can work with the, the substance object here. And so I'm just kind of looking at our time. I'm just kind of gone over an hour here. Um, so that is going to really cover uh, just about everything that I, I wanted to show as we went through. So we talked about, uh, I'm sorry guys, I got one more thing I want to, want to talk to you guys about, but you know, we, we went in and we talked about, you know, how, well, how can we upgrade our project? Uh, and then we also talked about, you know, what can we do with, you know, how does the new plugin work? You know, for those who are new and they haven't seen it, how, how is all this coming together and how's it working? And like I said, um, you know, we're in a beta state right now, but, um, you know, we're working a very aggressive schedule to get this, uh, you know, up to an official, you know, out of beta release. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, that should be that should be this summer. Uh, so uh, hopefully the dev team doesn't kill me. <laughs> I think that's something, you, you know, we're, 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 you know, just give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, but again, I can't give any official ETAs or anything like that. But um you know, so we're we're always working to uh, you know make sure that we listen to feedback and you know we get the plugin working as 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 best as it needs to be. And like I said, this is going to be the best version of Substance in Unity that we've ever had because there's so much we're going to be able to do now that it's external and that we can control it. Uh, we won't have any more issues uh, that we had last year where uh, you know we had uh, a change to the Substance Engine in Designer, and we could not get the update to be pushed into the official builds of Unity. That was something that was completely out of our control. And uh, a lot of our users really suffered for that. Uh, they went months and months and months, I mean, uh, uh, over six months, if not longer, without the ability to use the latest version designer in Unity. And so things like that will never happen again because we are able to update the day of. You know, when we have an update in designer with a new engine build, you guys are going to get it. So those types of things are, are, are not going to happen anymore, which is, uh, you know, we're thrilled about that to have control over everything. And then also, like I said, question that just popped up, Substance Unity, does it work with HDRP and LWRP? And we talked about that earlier, but just say it doesn't out of the, well, it does work. You know, it will work, but uh, we don't have an automated workflow for that yet. Uh, but what you could do, and I've been playing with it, uh, you know, you create your HDR uh pipeline you create from the unity template the substance outputs will work in like when you choose the 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 um like lit tessellation or whatever shader you want to work with in the high definition pipeline um you um you can use any of these substance outputs so see here i'm selecting them they select these textures these substance textures they can be used in the lightweight uh, rendering pipeline that works pretty well now um, they can be used in the HDRP pipeline now the the problem with that though is with HDRP you're gonna have a, a specific mask input that those shaders need uh, and, I, and I always get the channel mix wrong but it basically it covers like um, I think if you have ambient occlusion like your smoothness uh, you know just cover it's like a packed map for those types of channels and what we do not have at this time is in our packing so if we come over to our packing here scroll down uh in our pack control we don't have the ability to add this output mass so that's something that we're going to add to support hdrp um and it's going to be cool because you're going to have like your own mask output that you can then choose exactly what channels go into it so it'll work for you know unity's 
um, kind of default template for HDRP, but if you needed to work for it, you need to pack the maps differently for your own pipeline, you could do that there as well. So that's going to be a, a whole nother output that we're going to be adding, which is the mask output so that we can work with scriptable rendering pipelines. But like I said, it will work now. Like if you take these textures and just plug them in, it works. One of the things that I did to test was because I'm making my own substances in designer, I just made an output called mask. I left the usage blank and I packed the channels like I wanted using the RGBA merge node in designer, brought that in uh, into an HDRP template uh, pi uh, project and just took my textures, plugged them in, it worked great. And then I could, you know, change my parameters and everything and it worked. So it's it's not a matter of the textures, the substance textures not being supported. They do work. It's just a matter of us creating that automatic workflow so that as a user who's not creating their own substances, like if I want to get something from source, do I have the pack controls I need to create that mask? And another thing I'll just iterate on once more is that someone else had asked about Shader Graph. Do we support that? Uh, again, it's not something that you can just click, click, and then you know all the textures are automatically mapped to that. Um, you have to manually drag them to the, the Shader Graph material you create. But again, the substance textures that you generate from a, a substance, they will work with Shader Graph. So you can just drag and drop them to the Shader Graph inputs, and it works just fine. So there's no problem there. So it does work. It's just not full automated workflow or anything yet. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of where we are with the plugin, uh, you know, and again, that's some of the, um, updates that we have. One last thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, just really briefly, cause I know I'm just, I'm really jabbering on here. Um, when we look at our, our updates here, this is uh, something that I would have really wanted to talk about. So we talked about, you know, updating our projects, uh, but we need to talk about if this is important here about upgrading substance beta packages for 201. So we have an issue that we're currently going through when, you, when we have 2.0.0 and then we have 2.0.1, where if you go in to update, so if you look at this in the asset store, you'll see this update. And when you go to update, like if I do this import here again, uh, well, it's already in here, but over on the side, you'll see a bunch of uh, warning symbols letting you know that the GUI IDs are being overwritten. So that's an issue that we had when deploying to the asset store. Uh, and so what was happening with that is like, okay, well, uh, I had the 2.0 version. I created a scene. Now I want to update. It's, you know, basically messing up your whole file because you can update all your substances. They're broken in the sense that they lose their connection to the substance graph object. And they, um, they like I said, they lose the, the, also the materials themselves are no longer applied to the asset. So that's happening when you update. So what we have here is just some steps that you can follow to, to you know, save yourself some headache. It's still a headache. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, and so, again, we, you know, we hate that that happened. Uh, but it was, again, something that we really couldn't control at the time. But good news is we spoke with Unity and we do have this issue resolved. So with our next update, uh, when we have 2.0.2, uh, you won't run into that problem. You'll be able to have your 2.0.1 project that you're working on. When you up when we have update from the asset store, it's not going to mess with your scene file or anything. So again, going from two to you know 2.0 to 2.0.1, we have this issue, and all you have to do really is just kind of follow this little process here to do this. So the 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 kicker is uh, just going back and using these scenes. So what you would want to do is uh, come into here. You would close your project out. Uh, open up, if you would just look at it here, you could open up your, uh, let's see, in here, just delete out your plugins, delete out the substance plugin folder and the dot meta file, like we said, uh, import the new package. Then you'd have to, from inside of Unity, delete your substances, drag and drop them back in, and they'll automatically reassign themselves back to the assets that they had in the, in the, um, in the scene. But the problem is, is your settings. Like if you had, like I did here with this red carpet, you're going to lose that. So before you update, all we say is just to save yourself some headache, uh, just export out a preset and then just reimply the preset. So again, I know that it pains me to say that <laughs> because it's a, it's a process that you guys have to go through and it's a headache for you guys. And, and we and the develop, we hate that. We, we want it to be awesome and seamless, but uh, just please bear with us just a little bit longer, just a couple headaches as we go through this beta state. But like I said, we have this issue resolved. So in 2.0.2, .2, this shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, everybody. So uh, that's going to, uh, you know, finally close out this, this webinar. I really kind of jabbered on for quite some time. So I really appreciate everybody hanging with me. 
Uh, thanks for uh, joining with me. It's I always enjoy talking with everybody and you know just sharing what we're doing with the plugin and everything. Um, one other thing, uh, if you're on the beta release information page, we have submitting bugs and feedback. So we have forms for uh, a submission form you can fill out and also a, sum, uh, a feedback submission form. So if you guys find an issue, send it. Um, we don't track your emails or anything like that, so don't worry about that. But when you when the form is submitted, it goes to us. We have it. We're looking at everything, but you're not going to get like a tracking um, like notice or anything like uh, oh, this bug was resolved, or we're looking at this. Uh, again, we're not saving any of your information or anything like that. So it's just going to us. So rest assured, we are getting them, and we're looking at everything, uh, especially with the bug and the feedback. Uh, but, yeah, you're not going to get any follow-up emails from there. Uh, so, again, guys, thanks a lot for everything. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, you, know, you know, Follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you have any questions, check us out in our algorithmic forums. Ask questions. I'd be happy to help anybody. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me, and I will see you next time.